Hey, what's happening guys? Today we're going to talk a little bit about power supplies and to be more specific, we're going to talk about ripple and noise in the power supplies and how to properly measure them. So first of all, let's uh, just go over the basics here. An AC wave is your basic sine wave that travels above and below the zero point. In equal time frames and then if we use a diode a single diode and create some half-wave rectification our wave now looks like this because this point here has been eliminated by the diode so that's half-wave rectification and then if we go with full wave rectification, it looks like this. It's double the frequency of both the sine wave and the half wave rectification because this portion has been spun around to be back up here. So that is our typical full wave uh, full wave bridge rectifier and then because we don't want choppy wave like that we add a nice meaty electrolytic capacitor in there and we end up with a nice smooth DC wave but do we really? Because if we were to zoom in on, say, that part of that waveform, it's actually going to look a lot like this, which is the ripple. And then on these peaks, you might find a lot of ringing, which is the noise. So what I've got for us today are a couple of little buck converters which we're going to hook up to the DC electronic load. We're going to run them both at 5 amps and we're going to take a look at them on the scope and actually measure the true ripple. Now a lot of manufacturers will give you some useless piece of information like ripple 10 millivolts peak to peak okay 10 millivolts peak to peak at what frequency at what amperage because without knowing those two things 10 millivolts peak to peak really doesn't mean a lot all right let me set up our first example for you here and then we'll go in and take a look at it on the scope okay let's start out by looking at the scope here with nothing attached to it and you can see we're zoomed in pretty well here at 2 milliseconds and we are at 20 millivolts peak to peak. Okay, now I'm going to attach my probes here and you want to attach your probes as close to the <clears throat> output as possible. It, granted this isn't the most noise free way to look at things but it will serve our purpose and now if we power it up we can get a look at what's going on so let's rotate back up to the scope and get a look at the waveform now I'm going to stop it here so we can examine the different parts Okay, these big peaks we see here, here, and here, that's noise. And this solid section that we see right through there, that's the ripple. So if I can adjust this a little bit better, that's pretty good right there at 50 millivolts per division. And now I'm going to stop it again. 
and I'm going to bring in the cursors. And we want the cursors for voltage. And then I just need to adjust them. Okay, so there's our start cursor. Oh, don't want to bunt that one. So we're going to put our start cursor on the lowest point there. And then we want the end cursor at the highest point there. And then we can read our noise on this signal, or our ripple on this signal, is 104 millivolts. Which, yes, is a lot of noise, but that's a $5 buck converter. Oops. What do you expect? All right, I'm going to turn off the, uh, the cursors. We'll put it back in run mode. And a couple things I want to show you. When we go into the trigger menu, one of the things we want to do here is adjust our trigger. To our external and then our channel we definitely want to be AC coupled and we want our bandwidth limit on so there you go there is the noise on that one of hundred and four millivolts now let's switch over and hook up the other one Okay, I've hooked up the other one. Let me see, we're pulling 10 and a half watts. That's our input voltage, output voltage. There we go, 5.1. Let's me get it down to 5 volts so that we have a most accurate comparison. And then we'll swing on up to the scope here. Now, you should already be able to see a huge difference in the noise on this supply as compared to the last one. So let's bring in our cursors for voltage. And we'll adjust our start cursor and our end cursor. And we now have 82 millivolts peak to peak. Still not fantastic, but considerably better than what we were looking at there. So there you go, how to measure ripple on your power supply effectively and how to distinguish the ripple from the noise. Now if we, if we, uh, can we zoom in here a little bit more? No. That's about the best we're going to get. So that one seems to be much more solid than the last one. And that's the difference between a $15 power supply and a $5 power supply. Now imagine putting that on a lab supply that costs five hundred dollars, and you might only see ten volts or ten millivolts peak to peak of ripple. But remember that information is pointless without knowing the frequency, and it's generally at uh, or the bandwidth is generally at twenty megahertz, and uh, the amperage I measured these at two amps. So do with that information what you will. But I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Feel free to comment, share. Don't forget to subscribe. Uh, Jim Kearns, thank you. All my patrons, thank you. That's it. I'm out. Peace.